afternoon. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks for uh, going to do this. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, so I can just uh, jump around then with your roles so far. Yeah, sounds great. So start from the beginning. Um, I know that one of the first things that inspired you to do voice acting was meeting Scott McNeil and Michael Dobson when you were a kid. Yeah, oh my gosh, that was when I was a wee babe. <laughs> I met them at Anime Evolution in Canada. Wow, that was a long time ago. Yeah, and uh, here I am now. It, it's a crazy adventure. And uh, your first role was in SAO, right? Yeah, SAO and Excel World. Uh, that was, Excel World was my first like wall of background and incidentals, but definitely Sword Art was my very first character role. And was that was that also the first professional any kind of VO job that you had when you got to LA? Yep, in a sense, besides Excel World, yeah. Okay. It was crazy in a sense to see and realize that, oh, this show is gonna be on Toonami. And yeah, that was a great time. Is there a separate story of how you got into SAG, too? Uh, no, I got into SAG when I was recording uh, Undead Darlings. I signed a Taft Hartley, and then I joined the union a couple years later, and my first union credit was Eden Zero, which I was so excited because I instantly knew Kira would be the main Rebecca, and I'm like, oh. Blessed day, thank you. Now I can <laughs> fangirl over my friend. <laughs> and did you, um, I found that people, some people have different answers as to how they took the dubbing. Was it easier for you to get used to or was it still difficult at first? Uh, it was difficult at first, definitely. I mean, the training classes, that helped me immensely and mentorships. Uh, definitely booth experience was the main part was, you know, you just gotta trust your instincts, go with the flow. But yeah, at first, technically, it is hard because I'm a very emotional actor behind the booth. And yeah, at first, definitely was tricky. But now it's it's easy as pie. It's it, it's like a normal day in the park. Mm -hmm. This was early to uh, you. Is there much of a, of a story with the Ryu events and Witch in the Hundred Night? Oh, goodness. Uh, not much of a story, except uh, that was one of my very first few video game characters besides uh Danganronpa and Fairy Fencer um very quiet girl very interesting I wanted to be more of this franchise I really liked how spooky and dark it was I really wanted more to be honest but hopefully maybe in the future but it just gave you a taste of what is to come hopefully with future franchises mm -hmm. I really liked that game do you think that you have a personal preference for working on a uh, darker opposed to comedy? Ooh, I love both. Uh, why not both? <laughs> um, I mean, Akiba Strip was a huge comedy. I loved playing with my character in that show. But Boogie Pop Phantom was super dark, super spooky and odd. And I loved that too. You. You have different choices as an actor to play with. You can play with comedy or horror and drama. It's it's just both, Chris. I, I can't I can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think is the case so far where you've had to get the uh, darkest emotional headspace for? Um, that would most likely be Dongan Rampa. Uh, spoiler alert! Um, in the last chapters. When you find everything out, uh, who the traitor is, etc. Um, that really affected me in a sense afterwards in the session. I was like, oh my gosh, like it can even be you, it can be your best friend, it doesn't matter who, it can be anyone you trust. And um, yeah, that was that was a hard one, definitely. But I feel that role made me grow as an actor in the sense of, okay, well, now I've done this, I'm so excited for what's to come. Mm -hmm. And since there's so much that goes on with Sonia to uh, 
Does, did you find it easy to connect to her? Oh, 100%. <laughs> uh, during the first meeting of like, this is your character, you know, you meet the director, the clients, they explain the character a little bit. Um, <laughs> they explained her as, oh, she's basically you, but she loves serial killers. And I go, oh, <laughs> that is that is a very interesting aspect of someone. <laughs> But yeah, she is, she's a real treat and near and dear to my heart. I, I look fondly upon those days recording her. Mm -hmm. Do you think, uh, well, it's probably hard to pick, but which character do you think you have the most affinity with so far? Oh, out of anime and video games? Yeah. Oh, definitely anime. I mean... That's a hard choice. I would say Tomoyo or Yumeri from if my favorite pop idol made it into the Budokan, I would die. Mm -hmm. um, only because Tomoyo loves to support her friend, loves to be, you know, always there for her. I always try to do that in a sense. But then with Yumeri, um, that show affected me in the sense of like, oh my goodness, this girl has everything she could ever want, but she's still holding back and shy and that's how I was back in the day I was very shy very nervous so I related to her a lot but I mean I, I have to give a shout out to uh to Double Decker uh because my sweet baby girl Catherine is a foodie and I love to eat too so it's kind of a toss-up between those three I would bet but then okay. video games definitely Sonia um let's see where else and i want to say it'll hide from lord of magna mm -hmm. that was a really relatable character because i grew up in a family not as large of course um but it was nice to be the reliable older sister and i was like oh how cute this is so sweet <laughs> what about with uh things that you can connect to Tiara, what? <laughs> Good one. Uh, she's a proper lady, of course. <laughs> um, but man, I I had a blast with her when they were like, oh, she is a proper lady. She loves to drink her tea. I love to drink my tea. Um, but then they, they were like, oh, but she's also a, <clears throat> a masochist. And I go, oh, well, that's a different, that's, that's a choice. Uh, no shame on that good girl she can do whatever she wants um <laughs> but it was so funny because i watched playbacks of that game and played it myself uh, a couple of years ago and was like oh my gosh you could tell i have a lot of fun with her <laughs> are you comfortable uh like watching and playing things that you're in them oh yeah i used to be really shy about it but now I'm so deep into the product and such, I want to absorb as much as I can, get to know the story and acknowledge that, ah, yes, this was good. And I liked it and it's part of my collection. Mm -hmm. So would the first time that you got to uh, sing an anime be show by rock? Yeah, my sweet Tsukino. Thank you to Caitlin Glass, Forever in a Day. That was my first simul dub and my first show that I had to sing. And then from there on out, it just kind of happened again and again with Rewrite and, oops, sorry. My alarm just wants to go on. There we go. Thanks for your patience. Uh, that story just kept going with singing with Rewrite and Car Captor, then the um, Oshibudo. Mm -hmm. And I love, I love singing. I love karaoke. I love singing in the car. It's truly a passion. So I'm really excited to see how that happens and leads to the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with Show by Rock, I'm just so blessed that this sweet baby bear comes back to me every so often. <laughs> <laughs> it's truly a blessing. I know you've posted about it a lot, but uh, would Tomoyo and CCS be your like biggest bug bucket list character so far yeah so far definitely she i i mean i loved her since i was a kid 
And I grew up with Card Captor and Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball and TV. So to actually be involved in that show, I mean, I'll, I'll always forever and ever be grateful to Caitlin because that that sweet baby girl, and I can't wait for more. I've been reading the manga and I'm just so excited to hopefully see if more gets animated. Is there any kind of special story of how you got to my the role? Uh, in a sense, yeah. I was texted asking if I was be av- I would be available, and uh, for a project. And I said, yeah, um, I'm here in town. I'm not going to Japan or, you know, traveling for a little bit. And then I went into my session, kind of with the mindset of, I think I know what this is for but I'm not going to assume. And uh, Monica was there, Caitlin was there in Studio Up and Funimation. And they they both kind of look at me and they look at the computer, they look at me and they go, oh, well, we're all here together. I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. Well, this is gonna be great. And then they told me, oh, you're gonna be voicing Tomoyo. And then we all took a photo together. I think Caitlin posted on her Twitter account, but I was just, pure joy in that photo. I was like, oh my gosh, this is a dream of mine coming true. I love Card Captors and I'm so excited because she's a sweet baby girl and I can't wait for, you know, future generations to get to know the show and fall in love with it too. Mm-hmm. So this is going back to the uh, timeline of roles, um, of course, Ain and Zysteria. Oh, my sweet twin. Yes. That was one of the few video games I did in LA starting out. And my twin brother is Chris Hackney. And I was so excited. And Kira's in that as well, and Caitlin. A lot of my friends, I was like, oh my gosh, I was so excited to even audition for that game. And afterwards, Kira and I went and got coffee in the afternoon. It was It's a really tender, sweet memory that I have with that uh, video game and she came back in the anime as well so it's kind of a winner winner chicken dinner moment <laughs> <laughs> and what was the timeline of when you started uh working as a director i started working around 2016 2017 i started off assisting other directors such as caitlin tony i mean not tony um jerry anthony and a few others, and then I was approached to direct my first solo, which was Bofudi, mm-hmm. a very long title. And I instantly knew, like, oh my gosh, like this could be a new path. I love casting, I love, love directing, I love working with people who are really fun, really easy flow, and they can bring something to the table where in audition they showed it to me and I'm like yeah that's that's what I want for this character and hopefully I get to work on more it's been a real blast Mm -hmm. was that always something that you wanted to try yeah I've I mean I've always loved casting so so secretly uh, as a kid I'm like oh it'd be fun to be involved in that and it's been a really great experience to learn too how the background technical side works because I grew up with that as a sense of, oh, here it is on DVD, but there's so much that goes into making that onto a physical copy. And I guess early on, too, was there, I know um, it's usually recorded separately, but was there a case where you were really starstruck, like with who you were working alongside of or cast alongside of? I mean, always and forever, just a little bit when I meet people who I've idolized for, you know, a long time. Like Wendy Lee was one of them. I love working with her. She's so sweet. And Tony Oliver. I mean, I love Lupin. And there, I mean, there's definitely a few more. <laughs> Christina Lee, when I first met her, it's been such a long time now that I realized, I'm like, oh my gosh, like these people I know and cherish in my life and are dear to me. And seeing how I've grown as an actor in person is always really amazing. And this was another uh, 
dark role, um, Hitsuki in Riddle Story. Oh, yes. That was my very first Funimation title uh, back in the day when we record DVDs and big old chunks. Yeah, that was thanks to Caitlin Glass. I was so sweet and hyped to be such a sweet, sweet, sweet murderer. <laughs> And I was like, oh, oh, because here you think she's just this sweet baby girl. And yet again, I got to work with that with uh, with Monica. And I think from then on out, I was like, oh, this is going to be a very interesting story. And it was it. If you haven't seen Riddle Story to those listening, uh, treat yourself. It's it's a real it's a real eye opener of what anime can be. And it's. It was Mark and Barry's first lead. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been a case where uh, you've stepped away from a series because it was so dark or no? No, not yet. I mean, I, I do have a line where, <clears throat> excuse me, where, you know, if uh, something bad's happening to my character, something is inappropriate or I don't, stand my morals with it then i'm like okay i need to have a discussion uh, about continuing this but that's never happened the closest it got was the simul dub with handshakers but i mean it's animated is my sense uh, of it all is like you know this isn't real mm -hmm. it's animated this is someone's story that they wanted to create and I've already been involved in this and I don't want to say bye yet because I don't know how this will work out uh, to the character's story. But in the end, it, it ended and it wasn't bad at all. It, it was uh, an interesting experience. Mm -hmm. This is a more comedic role that uh, kind of catches you off guard with uh, Kinue and Masamune Kun. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, thank you to Alexis Tipton. That was such a fun mommy role. I could not believe, I was like, she can't be the age she says, but oh, she is. Um, <laughs> I loved that one of my first lines was like, hello, my sweet children, breakfast is ready. And then it shows the spread and it's everything that's unhealthy. And I went, oh no. They're gonna, they're gonna need to go to the doctor after this meal. <laughs> I do think it's uh, interesting that um, hearing your, the hearing the low register that you have with some characters that you haven't done um, a lot more boy voices. Yeah, I hope more in the future. I do love getting into the lower range of my voice. Like recently I've been voicing this villainous character. I hope I get to announce in a couple of weeks. Um, but that's been a real treat. Uh, I get a lot of sassy texture in my voice, but hopefully one day there'll be uh, a little boy I could voice where I'm like, all right, let's, uh, let's get into the knit and grit of the voice. <laughs> <laughs> Another uh, fun role, um, uh, Lily, an MMO junkie. Yes, I love MMO junkie. I text Terry Doty a lot about that show. Like, oh my gosh, I'm so blessed to be in this with you. And like, it's it's a show that hits, you know, modern society. I feel where it can show so many parts of what can be and what can make you happy and everyone has something that does that for them and I love Lily so much to the point where I'm like oh my gosh I need to play an MMO at this point I just need to dive right in because playing her character and getting to know her story and their complete story as a series was truly something I needed at that time because it's, it goes to show you that your dream can be nothing to someone, but it's everything to you. Mm -hmm. And I really, really liked that. And you're never alone. And that's a sweet, sweet sentiment to take. Mm -hmm. uh, she's in a, and Bed and Breakfast for Spirits is pretty wholesome too. Oh, yes. 
her love story was super sweet. I was like, oh my gosh, is she in love with her senpai? I hope she is. <laughs> and check mark. I was like, yes, oh, true love does reign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you've got to play uh, Ellen and Slime for a little while now as well. Oh, yes. Thank you, Clifford Chapin, because that sweet girl. <laughs> Anytime I see her or go back to play her, I'm like, oh, she just, all she wants is a bath. That's all she needs in life is a bath. And she has not had one until, what was it, episode, like I want to say the second season. And um, where they're eating all the meats. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I love that show. When I found out uh, Justin Cook was the leader, I think my favorite part as when I, they're running from that huge, huge ant and I got to scream so ugly. I was like, yes, I let it all out. <laughs> and uh, I'm going back to on the topic of uh, using your lower register, uh, it was cool to see you in Paladins. Yeah, thank you so much. I, uh, every day is someone comes up to me in the sense of like through the internet walls of like Twitter or email and I, they always say paladins I love Ash and I go oh my gosh yes and I see how popular she is and when they asked me to come back for her streetwear I was so hyped and then they showed me a character design I was like oh my goodness she's shooting puppy ball like a little puppy from her her little cannon and it's really funny and her what is it her flag has a dabbing chicken um yeah paladins was a real treat when i i auditioned for that i just did it and i was like okay we'll see what happens and then when i booked it i thought it was for a different character because they usually send you know copious amounts out um throughout the month of like oh here's a character here's a character so I was like, oh, okay, I expected something different. But when I came in and realized it was Ash, I was so excited. But then I realized later that day I had to record another show where I played a sweet baby, soft, shy girl. And I realized I should have done that the next day because my voice was so tired from Ash in the morning. And I was it's like, oh, God, I got to get some tea in me. <laughs> well, what do you think is the case where you've had to um? alter your voice the most significantly so it's coming out in a few weeks and it was the most in the sense because i've never played a character this passionate and yelly before in this range i'm okay. so excited to show it and uh announce it when i can but definitely that um but then other than that, the one I had to edit my voice the most, it's hard because everyone really wants that sweet, sweet girl. Um, I guess I would say Mono Funny from Danganronpa V3 would be one. And oh, let's see. I'm looking through my list. Yeah, definitely her. My sweet baby bear from V3 would be it. Okay. One of the main instances where you got to do a boy voice was uh, Shinsuke in Special 7. Yeah, that was a real treat when I was like, oh, yes, a, a little boy, let's try this out. It's always a fun day when I get tested or in a sense of like, can you do this? I never want to say no. I want to be you know, doing the best I can and in the booth as always. Mm -hmm. And even if it's a brand new character who is a little boy, I'm like, yep, totally. We'll do this full 100%. Let's go. And I found that uh, talking to other voice actresses that do boy voices that everyone kind of has a different process for it. Is there something that you do? I, it depends on what age the, the boy is in the end. Like, it could be, you know, I have an egg in the back of my throat. Or maybe it's, like, really congested. Uh, it depends where you place the voice in your body, like, in your nose, in your throat, um, like, in the back. But, yeah, mine's 
mine's definitely different than say like Erica Mendez or mm. Kira Buckland. Um, like you say, everyone has their craft, um, but those, those those are usually how I do that. And if they're a tiny little boy, it always comes down to the way they speak, because um, not every not every kid's going to have texture. Mm. And I know it's pretty rare in anime, but has there been a case where you've um, performed against yourself? Ooh. Mm. I would say, let's see, recently it would be a character that hopefully is coming out in a simul dub in the coming weeks, um, only because their morals did not line with mine i was like oh oh boy but when you play characters like that you need to understand where they're coming from and don't take it personally but definitely make it believable in the sense of your performance mm -hmm. what about what about a tight uh like technically with the same question like where you've have you gotten to play a uh, like multiple characters um in a, in, in, a, in a series so far multiple no i haven't had the the joy of talking to myself yet in a series that would be a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> um i think it'd be cute to be cast as twins and then just talk to yourself because they're technically the same person mm. um no not yet but that would be that'd be a, a real fun mm. i know i haven't uh brought up con uh con con cola yet it's a big character oh yes my my sweet triplet uh that show was really fun because with it it's kind of like planes trains and automobiles what's going to come next with these you know girls as you know ships or guns etc um but that one i really liked it was based off a video game i haven't played it but yeah. it looks fun like battleship almost and i i know my sweet baby girl is uh an avid character so that was great i liked her mm -hmm. and that was with jerry jewel that was a lot of fun and then uh i would take take it that you have a lot of affinity with uh izumi too <laughs> yes <laughs> how did you know <laughs> i play a lot of characters like that where it's what what's coming next girl cars i secretly hope so i think that would be really cool <laughs> another case where you wouldn't necessarily expect that it was you was uh your character in uh dumbbells oh yeah that was a lot of fun. I really got into that show watching it uh, because I love weightlifting. I think it's really fun, which is crazy to say now because years ago I was like, no, I don't like it. But yeah, that show, she was a real treat where she, you know, has truly a dark side to her, which... <laughs> which I think has opened the door for more roles because people realize like, oh, you sound nice, but ooh, maybe you can be evil. And I go, oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, this is more funny, but uh, Elizabetta and Demon School. Oh, yes. Anytime I come back to Elizabetta, I'm always like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Are um, are Iruma and uh, I want to say Kira's character. I want them to be in love. I think they're so cute. Uh, I watched that show here and there, and and when I found out Kira's in it, I was like, oh my gosh, yes, finally, our characters are friends too in the show. This is so cute. <laughs> and what was it in the recent episodes? They had a tea drinking party, and I was like, oh, this looks so nice. I can't wait until COVID's over and we can get back to doing tea times and all that jazz. But yeah, Demon School <laughs> is truly uh, a treat beyond all, because anytime Elizabetta comes back, I'm like, yes, who who's going to fall in love today? Because I'm a 
Asa ki best of love. <laughs> <laughs> I know this is relatively recent to uh, this Fuka and bottom tier character Tomozaki. That show struck me hard because I expected it to be, you know, the usual, oh, it's going to be a harem. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll totally watch it. Uh, I got thoroughly invested in that show to the point where I was like, oh my gosh, if Fuka and Tomozaki don't end up together, my heart cannot take this because they're so cute and sweet. And with, with Fuka, I really related to her in this sense of you know, having the courage to talk to someone new and to open yourself up to vulnerability of like, this is what I like. And I'm proud of that. And I think that's really sweet. And that show honestly helped me through 2020 and 2021 to realize that you aren't alone. You know, you can have someone there for you. And um, with Fuka specifically, I I just wanted her to be happy in the end, and I, I think it ended pretty well. And apparently, there's a second season, and I I, I can't wait. I really loved her. Mm -hmm. And then it was cool too to see you be part of uh, Dress Up Darling in some way. Yeah, Dress Up Darling, go Amelie. I have only seen a few episodes of that like maybe up to five or six but i'm back i'm like yes are are they doki doki in love yet because i just <laughs> love love and i want them to be happy yeah that show the i knew it was going to be special especially with the animation and how much care they took to design modding like she oh, i'm obsessed with her nails and their eyes look like beautiful gems a plus. This was going back a bit, but uh, another one that I personally like. Um, it's small, but kind of more impactful. Uh, Mineha and Nor Noragami. Oh yeah, that was with it was with Maxwell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was a real a real love. Uh, she screams a lot, and I that's something I've been trying to work on. And I think it came out through. It came out really well. I can't believe that was so long ago now that I think of it. Oh, and Micah's in that too. Yeah, that's a great show. I definitely recommend it for everyone. And I want there to be more, <sighs> hopefully. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is a video game. One of the most recent credits I saw was um, in Gunball Chronicles. Yes. No, that was an outstanding experience. Uh, we got cast through the Japanese company Inti Games. I direct. I uh, recorded it remote, and it was you know directly with Japan and their company and their casting director. It was it was an amazing experience. I do travel to Japan, so my next goal is once COVID starts, you know, going away and I don't need to be a hermit anymore, I'd like to go to Japan and go to a few dessert bars with that, that team because they were really fun to work with. <clears throat> so is there anything else that's uh, upcoming that you're a part of that you can safely talk about or? Yeah, um, let's see. I'm, I mean, girls, Gurgle, uh, dress up, darling. That stuff, definitely one that you hit on. Great job. I'm in that. Um, Girls Frontline is another one that's mm. basically humanoid guns. Um, interesting choice. Uh, and then I have a few other things coming out in the following weeks. Definitely early to late April. I'll be able to announce those on my Twitter. I'm really excited for those. Well, my final question then is always asking, uh, what do you want your legacy to be? Oh, that's a great question, Chris. I definitely want to be uh, a sweet, soft, like 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 a strawberry shortcake. It's always it's always a treat. <laughs> <laughs> is there something that you want people to take away from your 
performances so far? Yeah, I I hope they can feel my heart and my soul in the sense of how I truly love animation and I love each character that I voice. Like they're all part of my heart and soul. And I hope that within my performance, whether they decide to watch it dubbed or subbed, I, I hope they can leave and end the show knowing that um, it was a beautiful work of art and that there's more to come with with anime. I mean, this is only the tip of the iceberg. I can't wait to see what happens with the anime in, uh, industry. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. I'm glad that we got to do this. Oh, St. Chris, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. And thank you for your amazing questions. It's always fun to talk about the past in the sense because how fast time flies by you gotta cherish each moment well thank you oh thank you enjoy your day and eat something yummy okay yeah, you too <laughs> bye